And Professor Snyder, there was that uh, tremendous sense of victory yesterday for President Zelensky. Uh, and then today comes a, an, a Russia bombardment, uh, missile attacks in, at Ukrainian cities, uh, obviously uh, residential targets, and, and, and this explosion in Poland just across the border that is now under investigation. Uh, where are we now in a, after after what we've seen today? Well, I mean, let's first of all let's take a step back and think about the whole war. Um, Russia started this war with the idea that it would destroy the Ukrainian state and control the Ukrainian people within three days. That failed. When that failed, Russia promised to take all of the Donbas region. That also failed. Ukraine is now on the counterattack and has taken back at this point a little bit more than half of the territory that it lost since February, which is a remarkable achievement and something very few people would have predicted. Now, that achievement is notable precisely because of the evil that Professor Zel that, that President Zelensky mentions. Um, these scenes of jubilation in Kherson are a reaction to the arrival of Ukrainian soldiers, but they also demonstrate what people in Kherson and everywhere in Russian-occupied Ukraine, what people face. The torture, the filtration camps, the deportation camps, um, the rape, uh, the, the murder. And so the, for, for Ukraine, it's not surprising that a good news is followed by bad news. This is the, this is how they this is how they have to live, and so even as we, we we talk about Poland, and I'm sure we'll talk about Poland more, we should recognize that these kinds of genocidal attacks that are taking place today, where more than 70 rockets struck purely civilian targets, with a specific aim of cutting Ukrainians off from electricity and water, this is how Russia fights a war, and the Ukrainians are very well aware of it. Right now in Ukraine, something like 10 million people have been deprived of electricity for no reason whatsoever. I mean, this entire war is senseless, and these particular acts are, are, are particularly senseless. I mean, the, there isn't a discernible military strategic pattern in what they do. I, I mean, when you look at it and you say, OK, well, if these targets that you're striking today, if, the, if these are successful targets and you actually do, you know, knock down that apartment building, what have you accomplished militarily and how, how does that bring you closer to victory? Uh, that doesn't even seem to be part of the Russian calculation. I mean, if you if you watch a lot of Russian television and read a lot of Russian military blogging and try to figure out what they're thinking, it's striking that they don't really seem to have strategic aims anymore. It's more like they just can't stand the thought that they're losing and it makes them feel better. I mean, it's horrible to say, but it seems to make them feel better for a day or two when they inflict this kind of damage on the Ukrainian civilian population. It's like a kind of revenge. The Ukrainians are winning on the battlefield and they're winning on the battlefield intelligently with good operational planning, um, with precision fires, uh, with, with long-term operations, which lead to clear results of liberating territory. And the Russians respond with this. They respond by killing civilians. They respond by firing things that are not very accurate. And in the in, in, from their point of view, the thing which is supposed to happen is the Ukrainian population will suffer and put pressure on the president to end the war. But that's not how the Ukrainians think about this. The Ukrainians don't think, oh, we're going to suffer and we're going to give up to Russia. What they think is, this means that we have to win the war. This means that we have to stand by our president. This means that we have to fight because these are the kinds of people to, to whom we can't possibly submit. It seems to mean essentially the same as what the Nazi bombing of London meant uh, to Londoners and to the British. Yeah, I was thinking about the, the beginning of the end and, you know, Churchill talking about it not being the beginning of the end, but at least being the end of the beginning, the logic is very similar. You know, you're losing on the battlefield, and so you're going to terrorize the population. But the, the history of the Blitz shows that you can you can kill people at long range. You can cause them tremendous discomfort. But that doesn't mean that people who care about freedom are going to immediately give up. And I have good enough contacts with Ukrainian civil society and lots of your friends and colleagues in Ukraine, soldiers in Ukraine, all kinds of people, to know that although this is miserable, I mean, people I care about are in bomb shelters right now. People I care about have been listening to explosions all day. Um, this is miserable, and no one should have to go through this. Um, no one should have to go through this. But it's not changing their determination to win the war. 
On the contrary, it's just one more day of evidence that um, that that this war has to be won. And if you're a Westerner or an American looking at this, it's one more day of evidence that we should be giving the Ukrainians the kinds of weapons they need to defend themselves, including long range precision fires that will allow them to hit what is hitting them and air defense and aircraft that makes it less likely that something like this can happen. What are you looking for in in what we are learning about the explosion in Poland? So I think it's um, I think it's it's well, first of all, what the president is, of course, right, that we should be very careful and have a careful investigation before we come out and make any grand pronouncements. I think what we can say almost 100 percent for sure is that. However, these two men in Poland were killed today, they wouldn't have been killed if Russia hadn't invaded Ukraine. So, I mean, even if Russia didn't mean to do this, what happened in Poland was a result of a murderous campaign of missile launches. So whether it was a Russian missile that went where it wasn't supposed to go, whether it was a Ukrainian um, air defense missile, which hit a Russian missile, in any of these scenarios, it's ultimately Russia's fault. In any of these scenarios, it's ultimately just one more element of this senseless campaign, uh, the senseless war and the senseless campaign against civilians. But I think the president's been very wise in saying, let's consult. And the, I think, you know, what's likely to happen is that there will be an Article 4 rather than the Article 5 invocation, and there will be consultations among NATO members tomorrow.